Hey everybody, so it's time to talk about the Dallas Stars and the 2019-2020 season preview. Dallas last season made the second round of the playoffs after defeating Nashville in the first round, and which was a pretty surprising upset in my mind. Uh, they eventually lost in the second round to the St. Louis Blues, who went on to win the Stanley Cup. But Dallas had a good season last year. Um, they got ec excellent goaltending out of Ben Bishop and Anton Hudobin. Um, the, they got you know a lot of young players stepping up and filling roles that uh, didn't necessarily see them filling at the beginning of the year. And obviously, they've got a lot of talent on the back end with Miro Heiskanen and, and John Klingberg. Um, so heading into this season, Dallas has had a pretty interesting offseason. They've made some moves that I don't think a lot of people expected. They've added a lot of veterans to their lineup, um, bringing in Joe Pavelski, bringing in Corey Perry, and bringing in uh, Andre Sequeira. They've gotten a lot older this offseason, which generally is the opposite direction that teams want to go in. But Dallas, I think they know that they can make the playoffs with the lineup they have. They are now f looking to add experience, adding veterans. Um, adding guys who have been on deep playoff runs before and can hopefully help get this team on a deep playoff run. So let's take a look at their uh, lineup here. Again, um, lineups are you know very fluid. Lines change. Players move up and down. Don't you know read into these specific lines necessarily too much. Um, you know a lot can change over the course of a preseason and over the course of a season. But uh, the top line, uh, obviously this line's been together for a few years now. They're very, very good, very, very effective together. Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, and Alexander Radulov, that is a line that can put up some serious points. Um, so certainly no issues there. Looking now at their second line, um, I have Matthias Janmark penciled in as... Um, the left wing on that line with Radic Foxa in the middle and Joe Pavelski on the right side. And adding Pavelski, that is a big addition to this team. That really helps them offensively as Pavelski is a perennial 30-goal guy. Um, he, he could end up being a really, really big, important addition for this team. Uh, moving on to the third line, you have Blake Como, who now is 33 years old and you know, really been around for a while now. Good veteran guy. Uh, Rupe Hintz, who really burst onto the scene last year, and especially in the playoffs, had a very good postseason for Dallas. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see the strides he makes in his development this year. He's only 22 years old, and I think he could... Uh, he, like I said in the Carolina video about Brock McGinn, I think Rupe Hintz could be that kind of breakout guy for uh, Dallas this year. I think he could really have a big season. And then they brought in Corey Perry, who is uh, from Anaheim, who really has been struggling with injuries and overall effectiveness the last three years or so. Uh, Perry's really seen a downturn in his career. I think, um, you know, a change of scenery could be really good for him. Um, I I don't have super high expectations for what he's going going to do. Uh, I, I think Corey Perry's just about done at the NHL level. Um, certainly done being a, a you know highly effective star player. Um, but you know for for Dallas, you know you take a chance on a guy like that and see what happens. Maybe he maybe you can get fifteen to twenty goals out of him, and if you can in a third line role, that's a that's a you know worth it in a very good season. Um, and then the fourth line, Andrew Cogliano, Justin Dowling, and Jason Dickinson. Um, pretty good uh, fourth line there. Cogliano, veteran guy at this point that's been around a long time. Um, Dowling, one of those borderline AHL, NHL floaters. And then Dickinson is 24, really coming on to, to being an NHL player the last couple of years. And then will be a full-time NHL player this year. Um, you know, so overall, the Ford group, I think, is pretty good. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, the most talented, highly uh, highly offensive group in the league, to say the least. But they've got a very good top six. Um, they've got some, some guys down in the bottom six who I think could end up providing a good amount of secondary scoring and really help the team. And uh, overall, I think it's a, it's a pretty good forward group. 
Now, defensively, you've got, obviously, John Klingberg is the top guy defensively for them. Um, he'll play probably with Essa Lindell. Then on your second unit, you have Miro Heiskanen and Roman Polak. Um, and then your bottom pair would be Jamie Oleksiak and Andre Sakara. Sakara coming in from Edmonton, another guy who's had a lot of injury problems, much like Corey Perry, and hasn't really played all that well the last few years. But again, a change of scenery could be good for him. And if he does stay healthy, he could be a very solid veteran presence on that blue line for uh, the Dallas Stars. So, I mean, Kling Klingberg and Heiskanen are your clear, you know, offensive defensemen. Essel and Dell can do that as well. Um, he definitely can score goals. Um, and then, the, you know, those three are kind of your offensive guys, Klingberg, Klingberg Lindell, and Heiskanen. And then you ha really have all defensive guys after that, Polak, Sakara, and Oleksiak. Although Sakara used to be kind of an offensive defenseman, but just hasn't played enough recently to put up any numbers. Polak and Oleksiak are strictly defensive guys for sure, and very physical players. Those two, I like ha Dallas having both of them on their blue line. That's that's a good amount of physicality in their defense core between Oleksiak and Polak. Um, Goaltending-wise, they're returning the same goaltending duo that they had last season with Ben Bishop and Anton Hudobin. Those two were outstanding last year. Um, I expect them to maybe not be as good, but still be very, very good again this year. So, you know, I don't see a ton of holes in this in this lineup. I think their their starting lineup as it sits is is very good and they should certainly compete for a playoff spot again maybe not you know f you know first second in the division necessarily but they should be in that you know third fourth fifth range where they they will certainly be at least competing for a playoff spot um my issue honestly for Dallas this year is depth because yes, you know their lineup as it sits is is pretty darn good. But after this, af you know once you start having injuries start happen, and you start you know crossing some of these guys out, and if they have to miss significant time, there's not a lot of NHL readiness beyond this starting lineup. You know Taylor Fadoon is their uh, seventh defenseman right now. Um, Stephen Johns is really dealing with a lot of injury issues, which. Uh, is not good because he would give them, you know, a solid seventh defenseman option, but he's injured. Um, so Taylor Fadoon is their seventh defenseman now, and, you know, borderline NHL guy. And then beyond that, you're into full on AHL level players at that point. And in their forward group, I've never even heard of a lot of these, you know, potential fill ins at forward. Uh, Dennis. Gurianov, I've never even heard of. Um, Joel Le Lesperance, like, I, I, I don't know any of these players. Like, depth, I think, is going to be an issue because when you start taking guys out of this lineup because of injury, you don't really have high quality players that can come in and fill in, I don't think, unless these young guys really step up and play a lot better than I think they will. But, um, I do think depth will be the main issue this year for, for Dallas. Um, overall, I mean, I, I do like their lineup, um, and I think that they should certainly be competing for a playoff spot. And, and you know, they do play in a tough division, with you know, especially now with St. Louis get, you know, cup being a Stanley Cup winning team. You still have Nashville and Winnipeg. You still have, you know, you have Colorado now, who's... Um, really, you know, showing serious signs of improvement. You've got Chicago, who thinks that they can get back to the playoffs this year. Um, it's it's a very difficult division in, in the Central. So I'm not necessarily, you know, they should certainly be competing for a playoff spot. We'll see if they actually get there or not. But uh, I think it's largely going to depend on, A, health, because when this lineup is on the ice, you know, they should be a playoff team. It's when you start, you know, losing guys out of this lineup. They don't really have all that great replacements. And uh, goaltending, you know, does Ben Bishop and Anton Hudobin put together a season like they did last year? Or does the goaltending fall off and end up hurting them? So, um, you know, overall, I think Dallas does have a pretty good lineup. We'll see how this whole veteran experiment goes. 
um, with with adding you know these older players and experienced guys in. They're kind of taking a chance on Sakara and Perry. Pavelski is going to be Joe Pavelski without a doubt. But uh, and that's a really nice addition. But um, you know we're, we're a lot of a lot of with this team is we're just going to have to see how it all works out. So. Those are my thoughts on the Dallas Stars heading into this year. Should compete for a playoff spot. Definitely not guaranteed a playoff spot, but uh, should certainly be in the conversation. And they do have some really nice pieces there. We'll see how the health holds up and we'll see how the goaltending turns out. But um, overall, that's uh, I think they're in, in pretty good shape. So with that, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description below. If you'd like to further support the channel, the links to our Patreon and merchandise store are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.